Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're hearing that the broken record just keeps on spinning. That tuna bite out southeast of Block Island, out south of Nomans, and kind of some spots in between, still very good. Um, we're also hearing about exotic species now showing up in Rhode Island. We got Chub Max and Benito there, and that's they're spreading out. It's going to get better and better. Uh, sea bass fishing out in Long Island Sound, and then over toward Montauk and out to Block has just been phenomenal. And the best bass fishing right now is happening around Block Island. Surprise, surprise. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's Web Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. And we're just going to start things off with tuna, as I have been the last few weeks. Um, the tuna bite has just been off the charts. Uh, guys are getting... It just hasn't slowed down at all. I mean, the, it seems to be centered now around a spot called the Gully, which is not too far from Block Island. Um, seeing a lot more sizes now. We're seeing smaller fish, like in the 20-pound range, all the way up to true giants. Um, out at the Claw, the, the bite's been just as good. I've heard about some fish at the Dump as well. If you're looking to actually target giants, you want to head out toward the Regal Sword and Crab Ledge off the Cape. You just remember, there's no recreational fishery for fish of that size this year. Uh, you got to have that HMS permit if you're going to do it. Um, but there are some really big fish out there and some huge bait out there, like two-pound mackerel and really big sand eels. Um, the bite's been good, and uh, we've seen a lot of really big fish taken from that area. Uh, overall, if you're a tuna fisherman, this is a good year to be a tuna guy. And I'm just going to cover quickly the, the porgy scup bite because it's been awesome in Buzzards Bay. It's been phenomenal in Rhode Island. It's been off the charts in Connecticut as well. Shore, boat, kayak, inner tube, whatever method you choose, you're finding fish. Uh, basically, you just gotta find some rocks and uh, preferred bait by far has been sea worms. Um, the one thing that I will pass along that has been working for everyone I talk to that does it, the heavier you chum, the better you're gonna do and the bigger the fish you're gonna catch. Yeah, you're gonna get some silly bycatch fish and you're gonna get some small ones. Uh, but once you get that bite going and get those fish fired up, um it's lock and load uh so hey i mean if, if that's your thing especially you know they're, they're great eating easy to catch awesome for the kids um if that's your thing i mean this is it's as good as it gets right now so get out there and give it a shot and now we're moving over into massachusetts um, i'm going to stop start up on the north shore as usual talk to james uh he said that the runoff from the river especially the merrimack but some of the other rivers has introduced a lot of muddy fresh water to the mix up there and it's made it really tough for the surf guys um he said guys targeting some of the you know the biggest points with the strongest tide rips are getting some fish um and some decent fish but uh most of the guys are struggling because they're fishing in that brown soup and they're just not finding many fish the charter guys fishing outside the mud line are doing great so there's a lot of fish still up there a lot of bait up there um, and he feels that once we get these new moon tides, uh, new moon, full moon tides uh, at the end of the week here, it's going to flush a lot of that out and that uh, inshore fishery should resume as it was, which was phenomenal before, uh, before the big rains. Um, in Surfland, similar story. This is the same thing. A lot of, a lot of silt coming out of the river um, and general inshore surf fishing just hasn't been as good. But the guys out in the boats finding the fish on the mackerel schools are doing well. Um, and that mackerel bite continues all the way down uh, to Situate. Uh, Belson's Bait and Tackle tells me that guys finding the mackerel schools about one to two miles off the beach are getting into some heavy fish, some heavy bass up to 40 pounds, maybe even a little bit bigger than that. And there's been some good fish uh, from some of the surf spots up there as well. Uh, Minos has been a good spot and uh, the cliffs as well. And Heading up toward the canal, it's been a lot quieter this week. I didn't hear about any boat guys um, slamming fish on uh, Scorton Ledge or anything like that. I'm um, sure there are a few fish out there. Uh, I know there were some fish on Sandy Neck last week. Didn't hear anything this week. Um, and the same could be said for uh, Barnstable Harbor. It's the my wires that lead to that place have fallen quiet. I haven't heard any good reports from that area. Uh, the bass fishing reports I'm hearing start up at Race Point. It's been mostly a boat thing. Um, some of the surf guys are getting a few bluefish at Race Point, and I'm sure there's a few bass popping in here and there. But the bass bite has been mostly a boat thing out there. Guys trolling around are getting some decent fish up there. 
As you come around the tip of the Cape though, and get down to uh, Newcomb Hollow and places like that, some of these north, uh, you know, some of these northern beaches, they seem to be holding a lot of bass. Uh, not a lot of big fish. I'm sure there's some fish up to 20 pounds, but most of what I'm hearing is like 20 inches to 33 inches. That seems to be the, the uh, wheelhouse. And they're getting them on live eels. That seems to be the favorite. But uh, needlefish, SP minnows, sluggos, bucktails, all those things are getting fish as well. That kind of tells me that they're probably feeding on sand eels. So any slender bait is getting it done there. As you move down further into Coast Guard and Nosset, it's been quieter. Um, some fish up in the estuaries for sure. Some bluefish on the beach, but most of the bluefish that I'm hearing about in that area are being caught from boats. Um, and they're in that small to medium size, say four to seven pounds. Um, those bluefish continue along the upper Cape uh, in Nantucket Sound shoreline there. Uh, I haven't heard of anything great. I think it's just sort of a, you know, hunt and peck type of a thing in that area. Another place that has a lot of bluefish still is Chappie out in the vineyard. Bass bite in the vineyard seems to be slowing down. And the same could be said for Buzzards Bay, where everything I've heard in the bay has been really quiet. And then the canal, which was hot for, well, I'd say almost two weeks, red hot, um, went quiet. Uh, not a lot of bait in the ditch right now, and it's kind of gone back to the nighttime jigging guys catching resident fish. And there's really been no morning bite to speak of. We do have a moon coming. We do have breaking tides to come with it. It remains to be seen what will happen. I'm not even going to make a guess. Um, but for the time being, it's slow and there's not a lot of bait in the, in the canal. Uh, fluke fishing in Massachusetts has been eerily quiet. Um, in fact, I really haven't heard much at all. Um, I have to assume at this point that Nantucket Shoal is slowing down. I can't imagine that it's dead, but I mean, maybe those fish move off faster than I realize. Um, just going on past experience, I would say that Vineyard Sound, some of the deeper holes have got some good fish in them. You're going to have to weed through some shorts there for sure. Um, and then the same thing, you know, uh, some of those better areas are outside of the, outside of the holes between the islands there, just fishing in that moving tide as it drops over those edges. Um, got a good shot at getting some fluke there. I just haven't actually heard anything. So if you've got some news on fluke in Massachusetts, please send it my way. I'd love to hear it. Uh, I'd love to see some pics as well. And then uh, the only other thing that I'm hearing about Massachusetts is the freshwater, which has been really good, uh, especially on the Cape and just off the Cape, you know, Plymouth and those areas, Plymouth Carver, uh, Rochester, those those areas all, all seem to be doing well. Frog bite's been really good. The nighttime frog bite has been good. Some guys are getting some nice fish on swim baits at night. And then the, the daytime guys that seem to be doing the best are throwing jigs. Um, I guess it's been a little slow, uh, overall, but I've seen some fish up to six pounds uh, taken on jigs. So if you've got the patience for it, it's a good time to get a good one. Uh, but that's the story in Massachusetts this week. Moving over into Rhode Island, uh, the striper bite is really starting to center around block. Uh, surf guys have been doing really well there at night. I've heard of some nice fish being uh, caught sight fishing from the beaches in the daytime by fly guys. And then, of course, Southwest Ledge and some of the other rock piles and whatnot. Uh, around the block are just loaded with nice fish, big bass. The North Rip has some big bluefish. Um, the North Rip is also a good spot to find uh, slot fish most of the time. Uh, but a lot of the guys that are heading that way, as I alluded to in the intro, are just keep on going. You know, they're out looking for tuna. So I feel like the uh, the fleet might be thinned out a little bit on the ledge. It might be a good time if you're not interested in tuna and you just want to get a big bass. It might be a good time to go give it a shot. Um, there have been some decent bass in around Newport and, and some of the deeper water from Newport to Beavertail and over to Narragansett. Um, I haven't personally heard of anything of huge size, but definitely some fish into the low 30 pound class and a lot of fish in that like 15 to 23, 24 pound size. And then as you get closer to the beach, um, we are seeing a lot more schoolies right now, which is a good thing. We haven't seen a lot of schoolies around, but over the last week plus, starting to see more and more of those, and I'm getting reports from South County of the same thing. Uh, the only other place I've heard of some bigger fish this week is the Watch Hill Rips, uh, Watch Hill Reefs, I mean. Um, but the breachway has definitely slowed way down this week. Uh, bluefish, 
there's still a good little pile of those smoker sized bluefish up around the north end of Jamestown, kind of bouncing around in that area. So they're not always going to be right where you think they're going to be, but they are there. There's some slot bass with them. Um, there's been bluefish at the breachways and up inside the breachways on, on some days. And then, as I already said, out at North Rip on the block, there's, there's some nice bluefish there as well, especially for guys throwing diamond jigs or butterfly jigs, things like that. Uh, sea bass fishing has been red hot in Rhode Island and over into Connecticut. I've heard of a lot of nice fish. I haven't heard of any monsters, but I've heard of, you know, fish into the four pound class and really good action. Uh, guys are Guys seem to be favoring jigs more and more every year. I hear less and less about guys throwing, you know, whole squid down there for them. They're mostly fishing for them on jigs, and I think they're doing it just because it's more fun. You, know, you get that hard hit, and you feel like you're doing something. You feel like you're actually fishing. And, um, you know, guys from kayaks have been getting them. There's been a few nice ones taken from the shore. And then the boat guys, you know, are crushing them in 60, 70, 80, even 100 feet of water. Um, and then the fluke fishing is getting better and better. Um... We're hearing about more fluke sort of closer to home. Um, Block Island's still very good. Uh, still a lot of dogfish out there, but it seems like the bite has picked up uh, from South County, you know, say like Charlestown all the way over to Isabella. I know that's in technically in New York, but that's uh, that whole stretch right there just seems to be getting better. It's still not like lights out. You're going to go catch your limit in, in an hour. But there's a lot more fish there, and the bite's been good. Just don't be afraid to fish deep, and don't be afraid to micro-target um, some of the tastier-looking structure. That has been probably the best way to connect with some of these better fish. Uh, and then there's been some exotic species showing up in Rhode Island now as well. We've got, um, we've got chub mackerel. We've got bonito. And I uh, haven't, uh, haven't heard of any albies yet, and I don't expect to for at least three or four weeks. Um, but those are there, and then um, I talked to my buddy Anthony, Anthony Katoon, this week, and he said he was fishing a Danny that I made, actually, uh, off of Newport, and he kept seeing something swirling on it, and he was like, what the, it wouldn't take it, it didn't look very big, he got it all the way up to the boat, and he realized it was a trigger fish that was basically trying to make friends with that thing. Uh, it followed it all the way to the boat, it was kind of bumping up against it, and kind of chomping at the side of it a little bit, and then when he took it out of the water, it just kind of hung around the boat for a minute like eh, where'd she go uh so there's some trigger fish around as well and um that's more or less the story in rhode island this week now i'm going to throw it over to captain christian off from awestruck charters he's going to give us a little breakdown of what's been going on in his waters which is basically newport and jamestown take it away christian seeing lots of action out on the water a lot of life um in my opinion it's been uh, some fall-like fishing conditions in summer heat conditions. Um, so, you know, hot, humid, hazy days. Um, but I'm seeing lots of really small bait, um, uh, lots of smaller striped bass schooled up on that snot bait, rain bait, whatever you like to call it. Um, big fish are still around too. If you can fish them on the structure, um, you'll get them when the tide's moving. Um, early morning late evening as always are going to be your best shots um i know that uh, uh fly anglers have been doing great with the small bait around um lots of uh of the other boats out here are having a lot of success uh with the trolling techniques right the the tube and worm um you know the the big heavier rigs um getting down deep into the cooler water as our water starts to heat up here um Bottom fishing has been really good too. Seen lots of black sea bass action. Fluking has been really good. Um, uh, we, we've seen uh, some chub mackerel come in as well, which is always kind of a nice change of pace, especially for the fly angler. It's a cool little game fish to target and uh, they're good eating as well. Um, just waiting for that first bonito to, to come on the boat and uh, and then followed by the false albacore. We're, we're almost there. Um, Good luck. Happy fishing tight lines. Thanks, Christian. Great report. Always love hearing from you, buddy. Uh, now we're going to throw it over to um, the guys from Watch Hill Outfitters. We're going to hear what's happening in the western end of Rhode Island. Take it away, Mike. Hey, guys. It's Mike at Watch Hill Outfitters. Checking in for the week. Want to let you know what's going on. We've definitely got a difference in bait right now. A lot of small bait going in. The chub mackerel are eating up a lot of little rain bait. Uh, definitely get out there with a fly rod, you'll probably do pretty well. Either that or catch some of the chubs and live line them for some bass. 
We've also got quite a bit of bluefin that are still going on, basically in between Block Island and just beyond, so they're pretty close. If you want to put a little bit of meat on your table, definitely a lot of black sea bass that are out there to be had. Real big hump heads. I recommend some jigs. Some guys really like to run bait. Once you get them started, you can switch over to jigs and really do well with some large size black sea bass, real big hump heads. The other thing that we're seeing is we finally got some schoolies back, a little change in striped bass, some big striped bass out at block, big striped bass out in other zones, and now we finally hit the shoreline with some small little schoolies, a little change on the water. We also have a YouTube video, which is new. Harrison and the guys got out on the water. You'll really like it. Steven's in it. He has a great time gets his personal best bass, check it out on YouTube. Tight lines, I hope you guys have fun out there. Have a great day. Now as we move over into Connecticut, uh, the bass bite has been trending deeper. Um, and finally, as I've been saying for a few weeks now, we're starting to see some big fish in the race. We're starting to see some big fish in the sluice way. Um, and there's a, there's a mix, you know, there's, a, there's some slot fish out there, there's schoolies out there, there's some really nice fish up into the 40 pound range, probably a few bigger ones. Uh, nighttime is always going to be a better time to get these big ones, but with that fast moving water, uh, you can get them at any time. Three weighing bucktails, three weighing eels, um, even getting up tight to some of the islands and rocky spots and throwing something like the dock, you get a good shot at getting a big fish. And now we got these chub max in there, which is Providing a uh, you know high calorie meal for some of these bigger fish, I think it's just going to continue to get better and better out there. Um, I have heard that there's still been some really nice fish around the mouth of the Connecticut River, despite all the runoff. Um, they have pushed out a little bit; they're on some of the reefs, but it does kind of seem like they're moving it back in a little bit now as that water has cleared. Um, so that's that's another good area, especially if you don't feel like making the long ride. Um, you put some time in there with chunk bunker at night snag a uh, live bunker during the day or um or you know fishing from the beach with chunks or eels uh, i've heard of all those methods producing some really nice fish uh, as you head west further and we're going to hear more from um we're going to hear more from max at the end but it's the water's warming up a lot in the western sound and the bass bite has been slowing down i'm going to let him tell you mo most of the particulars but that's that's the basics of what's going on there uh, there's also been some nice fish at montauk so if you don't mind, mind making the long ride uh, again, especially at night, if you're drifting through there with some eels, three way and some eels, you got a good shot of getting a big one. Uh, I've heard of some real nice fish from that area over the past 10 days or so. Uh, bluefish wise, I've been hearing mostly about bluefish around the mouth of Connecticut River, some, some big ones. Um, you got a shot of getting these smaller bluefish almost anywhere, uh, but there's been some big ones at the mouth of the river, even up to 15 pounds. Um, and I know we got that the bluefish tournament coming up next weekend, so you know that's a good thing to, to keep your eye on. Uh, most of the other bluefish I'm hearing about, like in the Thames and in the Quinnipiac and heading out toward uh, the Hoosie and stuff like that, most of the bluefish are smaller. Unless you find a school of lit up bluefish on a, on some bunker, then all bets are off. You might get a giant. Um, and another place you might get a big one too is out in the middle, you know, between like. Port Jeff and Norwalk, Port Jeff and Milford, uh, that that kind of, sometimes they just fin over like 150 feet of water out there, and um, you can get them on a variety of methods. You can also diamond jig them in some of those areas as well. Uh, sea bass seems to be really good again, um, from Six Mile over to Southwest Reef, and then heading out to Montauk and around Fishers and up through the Sluice Way and the gut and all that, there's just the, the the sea bass bite has really lit up. I know the Black Hawk had a phenomenal trip this week with some really nice fish taken. And uh, heard lots of other reports uh, uh, from TJ of uh, Rock and Roll Charters, same thing. Uh, said the sea bass bite picked back up again. And um, you know, it's become one of the more popular fisheries, as I was saying in the Rhode Island part. You know, guys love catching them on jigs, and that's been, that's been the popular method. And fluking in Connecticut, most of the guys that I'm hearing about are heading out behind Fishers or over to Rhode Island or over to Montauk. So that tells you something. Yeah, you can catch some fluke inshore. Niantic area has some, um, but most of the guys that are serious about it are making a ride. Um, and that just tells you that, you know, the keeper ratios inside the sound are <laughs> hugely skewed in the wrong direction. Um, and that's basically what you're gonna find. Uh, that's what you're gonna find over that way. 
Uh, we did, I did talk about the Bonito in Rhode Island. They have not, to my knowledge, made their way into the sound yet. Uh, some of the chub mackerel have been out around fishers, so, you know, expect to see some of them starting to bleed into the sound soon as well. And then um, let's toss it over to Max now and hear what's happened out in the Western Sound. Take it away, Max. This week's striped bass fishing remains a little slow with our local water temps rising with all this heat. The best bet right now is early morning, sunset, and definitely through the nighttime hours. Guys chunking at night are still finding some nice fish. A lot of the fish are moving east, but locally around the islands, you can find some fish in the shallows and some deep water reefs at night. I would try drifting eels at like 28C, 11B, or anchor up in chunking bunker. The bluefish still remain really heavy in our local waters, and there's been a lot of bluefish starting to move in our shallows. So guys are cashing in on these fish on top water plugs, bucktails, SP minnow style plugs, and it's a whole lot of fun for the family. If you go out in the mid sound, try trolling wire with umbrella rigs or deep divers, and it's a good way to have a good action with a lot of big bluefish. Sea bass this week is good, but you gotta be in the deep water. Guys that are fishing shallower are reporting a slower bite, but the guys are getting on the 60 foot wrecks or more are finding their limits, and some nice blackfish in the mix. Porgies seem to be everywhere. The guys are catching them from our beaches, from the boats, uh, Sherwood Island's a hot spot from the jetties and along the beaches with sandworms and clams and guys on the boat are fishing some deep water reefs and local shallow water rock piles. And if you're on the boat, always remember to bring clam chum. This helps increase your bag limit. Fluking is so-so. Guys are getting them, but you really got to work through shorts and you got to put your time in. We have seen fish to like eight pounds this week and guys that are getting them, they're saying they're working through a lot of shorts and sea robins, but definitely out in 50 feet. <clears throat> and dragging bucktails with gulp, squid, spearing, or the big smelt. And this past couple of weeks, guys have been using those M3 spoons that we carry, tipped with the whole squid as a dead stick rod. If you have a really good drift, that's a good way to find big fluke. Thank you and good luck. And before we uh, end this thing, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on what's happening in the Coastal Kayak Clash. Last week, we had a two-way tie for first place. Well, this week, we have a three-way tie for first place. Uh, so that gives us... Justin Oser in first place with seven points. Uh, Bob Wagner in second place with seven points. And Gary Innes in third place with seven points. Uh, Black Sea Bass is the fish of the month for July, and that contest is wide open. Uh, we haven't received a single sea bass entry uh, for the month of July, and uh, we only got about 10 days to go here. So uh, hop in your kayak, drop some jigs, and catch me a sea bass. Um, Got a really good shot at getting a hundred dollar gift certificate to yakattack.com. And uh, hopefully one of you guys can do that this week. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks a lot. That's what I got for you guys this week. I hope it helps you guys. Um, as I say every week, you know, if you're watching these video reports and you really don't know what the fisherman's all about, give us a chance. Head over to thefisherman.com. There's a lot of free content on there. And then um, you know, a whole lot more if you subscribe, if you're getting all, you know, getting all the digital editions plus all the print editions. You're getting all the reports from all three editions. That covers Maine all the way down to Delaware. Uh, you've got local features that cover all that. You've got how-to from some of the best fishermen in the, in the region. Uh, we have contests for you where you can win boats and kayaks and all these other things. And those are all for subscribers only. Uh, but at the very least, give us a subscribe here on YouTube. Click that little bell thing down there so you get a uh, notification when we make a new post. And, hey, give me a like. Don't I deserve it? Hey, we'll see you guys next week. Good luck.